Welcome to the Chemical Burrito YouTube channel. And today what we're going to do is we're going to do a little uh, size testing of handhelds and answer the question, is this handheld pocketable? First up, we have the MiU Mini Plus. As you can see, it's a very small handheld, very tiny. And in addition to that, there are no weird protrusions or anything like that. This handheld is so small, it doesn't have anything dangling off of it that can break. And even if you put it in its case, you can still fit this handheld in your pocket. So is the MiU Mini Plus pocketable? Yes, certainly. Up next, one of my favorite handhelds, actually, the PSP Go. Been out for a while, hard to find or harder to find these days, but very, very small, pretty comparable in size to the uh, MiU here, about the same size. Open it up, and it's not that much bigger, but you can put a hard shell on the outside of it. You can close it so the buttons and the uh, analog stick is protected. So would the PSP Go be pocketable? Certainly. Very small, no weird protrusions. You can stick it in a sleeve, which is how I used to carry this thing around all the time, and no, no harm will come to it. Up next, here is the Anbernic RG405M, the horizontal metal version of this handheld. Pretty nice construction here. This is metal shell, so hopefully it's a little bit more durable. The trigger design actually is good for pocketability here. It's kind of a pain to play some games because the uh, triggers aren't stacked. But because they're like this, they are relatively protected and less likely to get damaged if carried around in a pocket. And plus, this is pretty small. Comparing to the PSP Go, of course, it's a bit bigger because of the uh, side controls, but still it's pretty small. And even in the Anbernic case, I can still fit this thing in my pocket. So definitely we're gonna go pocketable for the RG405M. Because at least, even though it has analog sticks, you can actually keep it in the case and still keep it in your pocket. Up next, we have the original, well, technically the 3000 model, PlayStation Portable in lovely Hannah Montana purple, I might add. And this handheld is a bit bigger, of course, than your BU Mini here, and certainly bigger than the PSP Go. Instead of having an analog stick, it has this analog nub, which is a little bit easier, or sorry, be a little bit not easier to snap off in your pocket. So... You can stick this in a uh, sleeve, and they used to have sleeves for these things all available all over the place. You could stick it in your pocket in that. Not too much of a problem, although it's getting on the large side to be uh, truly pocketable, I think. It's a little bit longer than the uh, Anbernic 405M, but still not too bad. So we might call this semi-pocketable. It's getting a little on the large side. It has some parts which we might not want to uh, want to get damaged, and we probably want to put this in a case, but usually if you use the sleeve, you can still shove it in your pocket a bit. So we'll call this one semi-pocketable. Up next, the Anbernic 505, or RG505. which is actually uh, based on the screen of the successor to the PlayStation Portable. It's based on the uh, PlayStation Vita screen. As you can see, it's a bit bigger here than the PSP. It does have triggers, but they are designed like this, so there's nothing dangling off the back. So it's not too likely to be damaged here. There's no delicate trigger parts hanging off of the back of this handheld. We do have the analog nubs. And I wouldn't carry this unprotected in a pocket, but I actually have the Ambernic official case, and it's a bit of it's a bit snug, but inside the case I can still manage to kind of shove this in my pocket. So like the PSP, we'll call this one semi-pocketable, 
because it is relatively flat. There's nothing hanging off of it except the analog sticks. I still wouldn't carry this around in my pocket without a any kind of case just to, due to the sticks. I wouldn't want them breaking off. But we're getting kind of the, to the upper limit of pocketability here. Now, one other thing I should put up here is let's take a look at the 3DS XL. Now, I don't have an original 3DS. I thought that was way too tiny back in the day. I would certainly consider the original 3DS pocketable. The 3DS XL, though, I would consider it to be semi-pocketable. It's a nice handheld. It's got nice controls here. This is the new Nintendo 3DS XL. But, and folded up, since it's a clamshell design, about the only thing sticking out are the buttons. Still, though, I wouldn't want this to get all scratched up, so I'd probably, and in fact, I did put it in a little sleeve if I ever put it in my pocket. So, but due to the size, I'm going to grade this one as semi-pocketable because you can shove it in there, but in a uh, protective sleeve or something, it's getting towards the uncomfortable side. So, still it's about the same size as your PSP and about the same, a little smaller than your Anbernic 505. But these I would consider semi-pocketable. You know, you can kind of get them in there if you have a case or something to protect them with, but it's they're starting to get uncomfortably large. So, let's look at a few more handhelds here. We have the Retroid. I happen to have the Pocket 3 Plus here. I probably have way too many handhelds. Pocket 3 Plus is actually fairly similar in size to the uh, Anvernic here. The only thing about the uh, Retroid Pocket 3 Plus is that it's relatively thin, but as you can see, you have a relatively delicate trigger area here for the two, uh, for the two triggers. Oops. I would certainly avoid sticking that in a pocket because these triggers are delicate. If you have the Retroid Pocket 4, you know they're really delicate. Seems like pretty much their entire initial shipment managed to break. But I would certainly not put this in a pocket unprotected. Even though this is the metal one, we've got the analog sticks here. And in particular, we've got this kind of unprotected. I mean, there's a little bit of metal back there, but these things can be hit on the front. And I would want to take that risk. So I'm going to classify this one as not really pocketable, mainly due to the analog nubs and the uh, fairly delicate stack trigger mechanism there. This is one place where uh, Anbernic has a little better design. It's actually a little bit better to play on the Retroid, but the Anbernic can more easily, uh, safely go into a pocket because there's really nothing to really break off on the Anbernic design. So, I'd say this one I'm going to classify it as non-pocketable, mainly because of the uneven back and the likelihood that maybe something will get snagged on one of those buttons and kill it. So, slightly non-pocketable here. Now, we also have, up next, the PlayStation Vita. The PlayStation Vita is actually similar in size to the Retroid, and I'm going to also classify this one as non-pocketable, because even though it's got a flat back and you can kind of stick it in a sleeve, these analog tr the sticks here are kind of notoriously delicate. So I certainly would not put my uh, white Assassin's Creed PlayStation Vita bundle in my pocket, at least not in a protective case. And then you get into, this, into the uh, issue, the same issue with all these other handhelds that are about this size is... You can kind of get it in a case and maybe shove it into your pocket, but it's not particularly comfortable. And, you know, without the case, this is definitely going to be kind of delicate. Also, you don't really want to get too much dust in these bumpers. They have problems enough as it is without getting additional dust in them. The PlayStation Vita bumpers were uh, notorious for basically not working after a while. So... I'm going to classify both of these as not really pocketable here because of less size so much as delicate things hanging off of them that might break. 
Also in the non-pocketable category, we have the Odin 2. Why it is non-pocketable should be pretty obvious. Number one, it's way the heck too big. It is far bigger than the Retroid and even the Vita here in this category. And it has analog sticks. If you try to shove that into a pocket, I guarantee you those stick tops are going to come off. So they're really nice sticks, but you don't want to stick them in a pocket. Plus, this thing is pretty huge. It's thick. It has triggers that you don't want to stick into a pocket and get them damaged. So we'll definitely classify that one as non-pocketable as well. Now, let's have the elephant in the room enter. The Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is the biggest handheld, honestly, I've ever owned. And obviously there is no way you'd be sticking this thing in your pocket. I mean, first off, who has pockets this size? Second of all, you have the joysticks, which are great to use, but I would not want to stick them in a pocket. You have the analog triggers. And again, this thing is just gigantic. So, if you carry this thing around in your pocket, you may as well carry around your pets, a small child, what have you. The Steam Deck is huge. It's a great handheld, but you will definitely be carrying it around in a case, and the case will also be huge. So, these two here, and the Vita I would consider non-pocketable. The Steam Deck, I mean, why are we even asking this question? Basically, I just wanted to show you how big the Steam Deck was relative to all these others. And if you want to see this in comparison to Tiny, here is the MiU Mini Plus. Remember, the MiU Mini Plus is actually the bigger one of the MiU Minis. And over here we have the uh, PSP Go. These are perhaps microscopic compared to the Steam Deck. I think you could probably pile all of my pocketable handbooks on top of the Steam Deck and still have some room for the Steam Deck to show out underneath. But I'm not going to do that because I don't want to scratch my screen deck my Steam Deck screen, but you get the idea. So, we have a nice little size comparison here of a bunch of different handhelds, both old and new. Everything from, you might consider the 3DS and the PSPs to be retro, up to these new emulation handhelds like the Miu Mini Plus and the Retroids. And of course, the, uh, you might say, king of handheld gaming, the Steam Deck, because it basically just does everything although it's gigantic. So, so to sum up our roundup of handhelds, the handhelds that I feel are the most pocketable are the MiU Mini Plus, PSP Go, and the Anabernic RG405. The, uh, all of them are very small in size, and for the most part, they don't have any delicate parts sticking out, except for maybe the RG405, which has the joysticks. But the RG405, you can easily put in the Anabernic official case, and put it into your pocket with no problems whatsoever. Semi-pocketable handhelds are the Anbernic RG505, the original PSP models except for the Go, and the 3DS XL. All of these are a bit larger, quite a bit larger, than the uh, other handhelds we looked at. The RG505 has analog sticks hanging off of the back of it, so... You probably want to keep it in the Ambernick case, sticking it in your pocket, but that gets kind of large and uncomfortable. So, I classify that as semi-pocketable. The PSPs are kind of the same issue. You can put the PSP in a sleeve, but it's still getting on the large side to comfortably fit into a pocket. And the 3DS XL doesn't have any outward-facing, really delicate parts. There's just the buttons on the back, but those are pretty durable. But you probably want to put it in a sleeve just to keep it from getting scratched. And it is getting on the large side. It's basically the same size as a PSP. So semi-pocketable for that device. Then we have what I consider to be not pocketable, really. And that would be your Retroids, the 3, the 3 Plus, the 4, and the 4 Pro. Basically for the reason that they have too many delicate parts. I mean, they're about the same size as a PlayStation Vita and a PS... And a little bit bigger than a PSP, but in particular, the triggers on the Retroid, because they're stacked, they do stick out of the handheld, and I worry that those things would get broken. So, and particularly if you own a Retroid 
Pocket 4 Pro, you're quite likely to have broken triggers if you did the pre-order. So definitely don't want to exacerbate the problem by sticking the things in a pocket where they can get exposed to even more uh, forces, pushes and pulls and what have you. So I consider that really not pocketable. Too many delicate things hanging off of it and getting uncomfortably large. The PS Vita has kind of the same problem. It has those pretty delicate analog sticks and the shoulder buttons, even though they don't stick out so much, they were notorious for failure back in the day. So we definitely don't want more pocket dust or anything like that inside those uh, ESD to trigger buttons. And then, of course, we have the Odin 2, which is just too big and has too many things sticking off of it to even consider putting it in a pocket. You just want to put that in the official Odin 2 case and stick it in your backpack. And then finally, we have Who Are You Trying to Kid? which is the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is an excellent handheld. It's probably my favorite of all the new handhelds just because of how much it can do. But it's huge. You may as well stick your pets or a small child in your pocket rather than the Steam Deck. So you definitely want that in the case. The case is also huge. And you want it stuck in your bag for travel. No one's sticking a Steam Deck in their pocket unless they're the Jolly Green Giant. In which case... They're probably not looking for a handheld anyway. They just carry around the whole PC. So that is my wrap-up of which handhelds are pocketable and which aren't. Of course, I don't have every handheld in the universe. I'm trying to get them all, but I don't have them all yet. And let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with any of these ratings here. Hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for stopping by the Chemical Burrito YouTube channel.